Welcome back everyone. iOS 15 has officially came out, so let's take a look at it on the iPhone 10. Now this update was a pretty big update in size, maybe not a massive update, really not anything else if I'm being honest. It was about 4.94, so about like 5 to 6 to 7 gigs almost on all my devices. So definitely not a small update by any means in terms of size. Now there's a couple cool features. First of all, FaceTime got a massive little update. You can now do spatial audio, grid mode. You can now send links to FaceTime calls outside of iOS. So if you own like an Android or something like that, you can send a FaceTime call from an iOS device to an Android device to have them join it, which I think is really cool. You can now use portrait mode and you can share your screen within FaceTime as well. So I will make a separate video talking about that. That's why I'm not really going into super in depth right now. Basically, every single little thing here I'm going to make separate videos about, I'm really just telling you how they are. Now, updating my iPhone 10 wasn't really that bad. It took like a couple minutes. Actually, it was one of the last devices to actually install this update, even after something like my iPhone, I think 7. So I'm not really too sure what happened there. The camera app also has a cool little update. You can now use the live text function. So basically, it will go ahead and to convert things to text, which I think is cool, but I feel like we've already had things like that before. But I guess you have that capability now, which is really awesome. You now have a focus mode as well. So if I scroll down right here, you can see this new little focus toggle. If I click here, it essentially allows you to go ahead and I guess if you're somebody who uses Do Not Disturb, you'll get the most use out of this. I do not use Do Not Disturb, so I guess, you know, keep it as you will. But this is another really cool feature that I'm going to go into so much more detail on in a different video iMessage has had a pretty big update as well. You can now view photos in terms of like a gallery app as well, which I think is awesome. But Safari, believe it or not, has gotten one of the biggest updates. So going into Safari, you can see it automatically looks a little bit different. You can see I don't have a tab up top rather than I have a tab on the bottom. If you click on the three dots, it still takes you to something that looks kind of familiar right here. Not really that, I was supposed to click here. I guess it looks different per device. You can get into the tabs by clicking there, but you can also swipe from the side and get into the tabs there as well. So you can see, I can go ahead and swipe. I can keep swiping and keep getting into a ton of different tabs. And I think that's a really cool thing. I like this a lot. It makes it seem much more seamless. It, I, I just wish it didn't look super like almost like my home tab. Like when I swipe here, it looks almost the same thing. So it's going to confuse me a little bit. Hopefully they can make it look a little bit different, but I think this looks really awesome. Safari also ha now has essentially the capability of using the Safari extensions. So you can now utilize those extensions on your iPhone, which I think is awesome in and of itself. And notifications also got a little bit of an update as well. So I don't really have any notifications yet, but they also got a little bit of an update, which is cool. Now I have another iPhone 10 on iOS 14. So let's go into a speed comparison. I'm hoping to do them kind of like right here. Okay, my camera just shut off me. I'm not really 100% too sure why. And that really pretty much covers up a majority of the apps I wanted to test. We can go and try the cameras, three, two, one. And you can see, I mean, roughly around the same thing. There's not really that big of a difference just yet, but I do think throughout time, we're gonna probably see a bigger difference. So that essentially covers up, I guess, a quick speed comparison. <laughs> And ultimately, what I'll tell you is, you know, whether you should install this or not, I would recommend staying away from iOS 15 right now. I would highly recommend not installing this beta on any device that you own. It's going to be, you know, full of bugs. It's going to have a lot of problems. You are much better off installing something like, you know, iOS 14.6 or something like that on your phone. It really doesn't make too much sense to actually use this on your device right now. Like I mentioned, it's going to be full of bugs, it's going to have a lot of issues, and you are much better off installing an official version rather than a beta. I would even recommend staying away from this beta until like iOS 15.1, and then I'll probably kind of recommend, you know, using this beta. But I think other than that, this beta is great, I like it. I would recommend staying away from it until iOS 15.1 officially comes out, but no earlier than iOS 15 official in my opinion. So 
that essentially covers it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much if you guys get hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly than everything else, every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.